What's going on everyone? The Brooklyn Nets are very likely to trade Kevin Durant and the Boston Celtics seem like the number one destination. They could put together the best package to acquire KD. They are a team that seems to really want KD and based on reports, they feel like Kevin Durant is that missing link they need to kind of put them over the top. Uh, that go-to closer, that guy that could just come in, close out games for them, uh, which seemed to be a big problem for them last year, right? Uh, even the Miami series. Jimmy Butler was uh, an in and out three away from sending them home and being in the NBA Finals. And then when they got to the Finals, there were games where, you know, it looked like they could have won and they just weren't able to close out. They weren't able to score at the end. And the idea is that Kevin Durant would be that guy. He has a history of hitting the big shots, of being able to take over games late in quarters, things like that. And the Boston Celtics and the Brooklyn Nets are currently in discussions on trying to put something together, right? Kevin Durant reiterated that he wants to be traded, gave that ultimatum. If you want me to stay, well, I need you to fire Steve Nash and I need you to fire Sean Marks, but Joe Sy isn't going to do that. Now, the thing is, when it comes to the Boston Celtics trade, it appears that they very likely are going to center a package around Jalen Brown, likely Marcus Smart, maybe a third player, Derek White, Grant Williams, something along those lines, and then a couple draft picks. Even if it's just Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, and a handful of draft picks, that's likely what it'll take to get it done. And based on reports, Boston is at least offering Jalen Brown. So it will be a package around Jalen Brown. Now, many people feel that the Celtics shouldn't trade Jalen Brown, you know, that he's young, that they upgraded their roster, and they were just in the finals. They were two wins away. Why go and get Kevin Durant? Why blow up your team? And a big issue is in Jalen Brown himself. He's not going to sign a contract extension because by signing an extension, he's losing out on a lot of money because he can actually make more money as a free agent just based on the extension rules. And the fear is that Jalen Brown will leave the Boston Celtics uh, in free agency. It's one of the reasons the San Antonio Spurs traded DeJounte Murray because it was like, hey, we're probably going to lose him anyway because we're a rebuilding team. So let's trade him away now and then just start this tank. And then maybe we can go get a guy like Victor to kind of like turn the fate of the franchise around. Same thinking, right? Who knows what will be available uh, if you have to trade Jalen Brown, say, next year uh, because you're worried about him leaving at the end of that season. Well, okay, can you get a guy like Kevin Durant? Is Kevin Durant even available or does another team snag him away? So the thinking and logic from the Celtics standpoint is like we may lose Jalen Brown, so let's go get a guy in Kevin Durant. You might have to lose Marcus Smart in the process, but you got, you know, a Malcolm Brogdon to kind of fill in. You got a Gallo. Uh, you still have a great core around these guys. Uh, and you likely keep like a Grant Williams or a Derek White. You know, you still have Al Horford. And then you have Robert Williams, who the Celtics are really high on. Uh, they are so high on him that they have refused to trade him in a trade. He is the one untouchable. Him and obviously Tatum. But Tatum is more so because they can't even trade him even if they wanted to. Uh, I've even said that I, if I was the Boston Celtics, I would trade Tatum before I traded Jalen Brown. And it's not that I think Jalen Brown is the better player. Tatum is clearly the better player. But the issue is if you get rid of Marcus Smart and you get rid of Jalen Brown, who is that vocal leader in the locker room? Who is that player that can sort of rally the troops? Because Tatum is not that vocal guy, right? And neither is Kevin Durant. They're not those leaders that you want sort of leading the charge. And that's the big concern. And that's one of the reasons the Celtics don't want to trade Marcus Smart in a deal with Jalen Brown. But I do think if push comes to shove, they will give him up. Well, the one untouchable based on reports is Robert Williams, that they don't want to trade Robert Williams, which does make a lot of sense. I mean, he is by the eye test, just a 10-10 guy. Uh, he's a guy that can block shots, that can change a lot uh, on the court defensively, but many people probably look at him and go, oh, he's just this, you know, he's just, you know, your role player, he's your center. Like, you can replace him, why wouldn't you trade him? But he's more valuable than that. I mean, the the stats on him for his per, I mean, he is top 10 in per in the entire league, uh, which is remarkable. And then on top of that, just the ability to affect shots, you know, def uh, offensive rebounds, uh, everything, just the, the block shots, the defense, and to have that sort of cog in your center manning the fort, especially with Kevin Durant 
and you know Jason Tatum. You, you have Al Horford. Uh, you know you, you probably run Malcolm Brogdon, maybe Derek White. As your that's probably going to be your starting five at the end of this trade. Very likely, you know, we'll see what ultimately ends up uh, being part of the trade. But the idea of them not wanting to trade Robert Williams, it really does make a lot of sense. You know, he's he's a more old school traditional center, just a big body that can block shots. He's not the greatest offensive threat, but they don't need that, especially if you go get Kevin Durant. You don't really need a center that that can get you 20 a night, night in and night out. You need somebody that can do what Robert Williams can do. And so I fully understand why the Celtics don't want to trade him or why they're not interested in trading him in a deal. Uh, obviously, they, if they could, like to keep Marcus Smart. Jalen Brown is gone. And I think the Celtics have accepted that, that Jalen Brown is likely gone one way or another. And that's a big reason why I think the Celtics end up doing this deal. Because one, they likely know Jalen Brown is gone. But beyond that, it's probably even more likely he's gone now because he's not happy he's in trade packages. And yeah, he came out and said, you know, yeah, like, this is my team. You know, I fully stand by the Celtics, this, that, and the other. But like, what is he supposed to say? You know, what is he supposed to do? Is he going to be that guy that's going in there and just causing mayhem? No, he's not. He's not. He knows what he's doing. He knows that you you say the PC answer, you say the, you know, the, the publicist answer to kind of keep the peace and he likely knows that he's he's getting sent out or he's leaving the Celtics one way or another. And so you want to keep as many key components as possible. There are a lot of questions with health when it comes to Robert Williams, but his impact on the court is bigger than just like his 10 points and 10 rebounds. I mean, just everything that he is, a guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands, a guy that is a hustle guy, a guy that's willing to, to do the dirty work, you need that, especially on a contending team. And we saw the impact that he had uh, when he was on the court. And then we saw the effects of him not being on the court. And he was a big component of that Celtics just incredible defense. So they obviously want to keep him, especially if you're losing Marcus Smart. Especially if you know you're losing Jalen Brown. You're losing two key defensive guys. Now, Kevin Durant has always been a solid defender. He's always been a guy that at least tries on the defense. He is getting older, so he's not that lockdown guy he once was, but he's still a seven-foot guy that can, you know, guard the perimeter, block shots, is still, you know, pretty stout defensively, and uh, is a guy that at least contributes. So you're kind of getting that there. Celtics were really good defensively because of their team defense, which I don't think will change. And Brogdon is going to provide a lot of the same things that Marcus Smart did. So I don't think that they would really miss a beat defensively as long as they have Robert Williams. Now, you know, if you have to give up Smart, you have to give up Brown. At this point, I think that that's kind of, you're almost getting left with no choice. Because if this report is true and the Celtics are making this clear, which it got put out. So obviously somebody said something. And if you're Jalen Brown and you're Marcus Smart, you got to be looking at this as like, okay, so Robert Williams is untouchable, but we're on this camp over here of like, hey, let's trade him. Like, I get it's Kevin Durant, but really, like, I'm not, you know, Marcus Smart, who's been there for through all of this roller coaster that is the Boston Celtics, has been the one constant, the one consistent, the one vocal leader in that locker room. The guy that has no problems calling everybody out and letting people know what is really the deal. You know, and and yes, Ime Odoku is a great leader and a great vocalist as far as like the locker room and the presence and all that stuff, but you need that player. Uh, having a player that can kind of get in people's chests, get in people's faces, let them know when they're messing up, that you can do more than a coach can. You know, you can get your point across easier than a coach can. Uh, so to have that presence in the locker room, I think, is something that's really undervalued. And uh, if you lose Marcus Smart, it, it's it's not the end of the world. I mean, Marcus Smart isn't a guy that, you know, he's not a superstar or anything like that. But he is that guy that is is a missing piece on a lot of teams that could make you a contender. Because just everything he provides and what he's able to do on the court um, but, you know, I just think if you can get Kevin Durant, you got to do it right, especially if you're worried about losing Jalen Brown and just all the talks has likely muddied the water a little bit. You know, I don't think Jalen Brown's the guy that's going to, 
you know, sit out or, or cause locker room issues. Same thing with Marcus Smart. I don't think either of them are those guys, but you can't tell me that they're happy about this, that they're sitting there going, oh yeah, you know, Robert Williams is untouchable, but we're not. Like, yeah, that's totally cool. You know, because these two guys have been arguably the most consistent and, and constant on the Celtics. You know, they've been the go-to guys. And Jalen Brown, I completely understand why he's upset. You know, he's looking at it as like, dude, I'm the only one that showed up. You know, I was putting up 20-point fourth quarters trying to keep this team alive in the finals. Like, and now you want me gone for Kevin Durant? Like, okay, I see how that is, you know? So I understand his his issues and his concerns. And Marcus Smart, I mean, beyond being the, the defensive player of the year and just being, like, the vocal leader and stuff, like, the Celtics stats of winning, like, their winning percentage when Marcus Smart puts up, like, 18-plus is like 90% or something crazy like that. Like they only lost like two games when Marcus Smart put up 18 points. Cause like when he's that third scorer for this team, this team is like almost unbeatable. Like they just win every game when he's putting up 18. And it's because you have a guy like Tatum, you have a guy like Brown that are each able to give you, you know, 25 a night. They're putting up 50. If you can get that third guy that can give you, you know, 20 or 18 a game, you're you're pretty hard to beat and the idea is that Kevin Durant's going to be able to get you what Jalen Brown got you but a lot more efficiently and a lot easier is the big thing and there's a lot of concerns with Jalen Brown right his dribbling like you know like it wasn't as apparent until like the playoffs happened that like Jalen Brown isn't a very good ball handler and it's like that's strange out of everything that he's great at dribbling the ball seems to be an issue you know, and efficiency, you know, like how efficient is he in the scoring department? Uh, Jason Tatum, when he's on, he is very efficient. Kevin Durant, he is very efficient. And the logic is Kevin Durant can go get you 20 on, you know, five, eight shots, you know, rather than Jalen Brown, he needs 12 to 15 uh, to get you that same amount of point total, you know? So, that's the difference is that Kevin Durant's going to be able to get you the same amount of production night in and night out. And if he's putting up as many shots as Jalen Brown, he's going to get more points than Jalen Brown would because he's just a more natural gifted scorer. And so I think that that is a big part of this whole thing. Uh, and I know many people look at it as well, Boston sh- shut down uh, Kevin Durant and this, that, and the other. It's not what happened. I mean, yes, to an extent, but one, Boston's always been the team to figure out how to like stop guys. Like they were the ones that figured out build the wall to stop down and shut down Giannis, which they were able to do. With Kevin Durant, it was very simple. Stop Kevin Durant and you'll win the series. Don't worry about anybody else. Just put bodies on Kevin Durant. And that's what they did. Every time Kevin Durant was in a position to get the ball or got the ball. They had two or three people in his chest on him, either making him take a bad shot or getting the ball out of his hands. And even like the commentators were talking about how wide open the the uh, Brooklyn Nets were during that series. And like they were even saying like, you know, man, if they could just hit like a couple shots, they'd probably win a couple games here because everybody was just not making shots. But that was the whole game plan. If we stop Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant is the heart and soul of this team. If he's not performing well, everybody else is going to flounder because they're not used to to not having to pick up the slack for Kevin Durant. And that was the whole point. Just stop KD. And they did a really good job of that. So I don't think it's that. It's just, you know, all you had to worry about was Kevin Durant in the Nets series. And so that's what they did. They just worried about Kevin Durant. Now, when you're talking Boston, there's... You know, Jason Tatum, who can go off at any point. Uh, you know, you have guys like, hopefully you can keep a Derek White, who showed he can put up points. You know, if you, if you have a Brogdon, Brogdon's a guy that can put up points if he can stay healthy, stuff like that. So I think they're in a really good spot. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass the question on to you. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. What do you think about the Boston Celtics keeping Robert Williams off the table? It's not part of trade negotiations. Do you think like, yeah, that's completely understandable. He's the one key that you have to keep. Whether you have Jalen Brown or you have Kevin Durant, you got to keep your center. That's important. Or do you think, no, like push comes to shove, he'll end up going to if need be. Go get Kevin Durant. 
Do you even want the Celtics to go and trade for Kevin Durant? However you feel about it, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, follow by the bell notification, stay up to date with all things sports, join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.